Gandhi's Journey, Advocacy, Beliefs, and Transformation, 1899-1910 Joseph Chamberlain, a British leader, was visiting South Africa in order to collect money for the British government. Gandhi prepared reports for him about the problems of the Indians in South Africa, but Chamberlain was not interested. After the war, many Indians wanted to return to their homes and jobs in the Transvaal province, but British officers made this difficult. Gandhi decided to stay in the Transvaal to help the Indians there, and he opened a law office in Johannesburg. Gandhi helped to start a new weekly newspaper called Indian Opinion, and he wrote for it every week. This was the beginning of his regular newspaper writing, which continued for the rest of his life. At this time, Gandhi began to read the Gita seriously. Every day he learned some words from it, and slowly his opinion about money changed. Instead of earning money for himself and his family, he wanted his money to help other people outside his family. Gandhi often ate his meals at a vegetarian restaurant, and there he met a British newspaper reporter called Henry Polak. They became friends, and one day in 1904, when Gandhi went by train to the offices of the Indian Opinion in Durban, Polak gave him a book to read on the long journey. The book was Unto This Last by John Ruskin, a famous British writer and thinker, and Gandhi found it impossible to put the book down. Gandhi discovered some of his deepest beliefs in this book, that every human being has the right to earn enough money to live comfortably, that everyone should do some work with their hands, and that the work of a cook, for example, is as valuable as the work of a lawyer. Gandhi decided to change his life and begin to live in a simpler way. Immediately, Gandhi moved the offices of Indian Opinion to a farm in Phoenix, about 22 kilometers from Durban. All the newspaper's workers went to live on the farm, but Gandhi kept his office in Johannesburg, where Henry Polak began to work with him. Castor had come to South Africa in 1902 with three of their boys. Harilal, the eldest, stayed with his uncle in Rajkot. Gandhi now explained to his wife that they were going to live differently. The servant lived as one of the family, and they all helped with the cooking, washing, and cleaning. When Henry Polak, who was a Jew, married a Christian woman called Millie, they came to live with the Gandhi family and helped with the work of the house. In 1906, African Zulus in the British province of Natal began to fight against the government because of a new tax. Gandhi offered to start an ambulance corps to help injured soldiers, as he had done in 1899. White people did not want to care for the Zulus, and so for four weeks, Gandhi and his ambulance team cared for injured Zulus. Gandhi experienced the horror of war and wrote later about the terrible cruelty of the British soldiers. Sometimes. The Corps marched for over 60 kilometers a day through the beautiful hills, and Gandhi had time to think deeply about many things. He realized that his heart was with the Zulus, not with the British, and that he wanted to give his life to helping others. He knew that there would not be time for a normal family life, and he did not want more children. After he had discussed this with his wife, they began to sleep separately. After the war, Gandhi moved his family from their comfortable home in Johannesburg to the farm in Phoenix. There were now several families living there. They worked and cooked together and earned the same money, three pounds each month. The government of the Transvaal now wanted every Indian over eight years old to give their names and personal details to the government and to carry papers at all times. Police officers would be able to stop Indians or go inside their houses to check their papers. Gandhi arranged a meeting in a theater in Johannesburg in the Transvaal to discuss these laws with other Indians, Muslims, and Hindus. The theater was full of people who were angry about the new laws. When Gandhi asked them, everyone stood up and promised God that they would fight against these laws. They were all ready to follow Gandhi. Before the new laws could begin, the British government had to agree to them. And so, in October 1906, Gandhi sailed to London, where he met many British leaders. With the help of some students, Gandhi wrote about 5,000 letters during his six weeks there, explaining the situation to newspapers and leaders. The British government promised Gandhi that the new laws would not be accepted, but at the same time, they told the Transvaal that they would accept the laws. When Gandhi returned to South Africa, he learned that the British government had lied to him. In 1907, Transvaal became independent, and at once the new laws against Indians began. Gandhi realized that small groups could not defeat a strong government. 
He thought about a new way of fighting against laws without using violence. He called this new way Satyagraha, a name made of two words, Satya, which means truth, and Agraha, which means force. Gandhi believed that truth and love would change the world in a way that violence could not. Most Indians refused to give their names to the government, and the police began to arrest the Indian leaders. More than 150 Indians were put in prison because they refused to obey the new laws. Gandhi was sent to prison in Johannesburg for two months. The food was bad and the place was dirty, but the guards were friendly and Gandhi was allowed to read. He read the Gita in the morning and the Quran in the evening, and he was happy to have many other books. The leader of the government, John Christian Smuts, sent a message to Gandhi in prison. If the Indians agreed to give their names to the government, the new laws would be taken away. Gandhi agreed to this and was released from prison in January 1908. He immediately arranged a meeting with other Indians. Many agreed with Gandhi, but some who were angry with Gandhi followed him after the meeting and beat him with sticks. Gandhi was badly injured, and for ten days he was cared for in the home of white Christians. The daughter of this family sang a famous Christian song to Gandhi called Lead Kindly Light. Gandhi often remembered one line from this song, One Step Enough for Me. Indians began to give their names to the government, as Gandhi advised, but in May 1908 the government said that the laws would stay. Smuts had lied to Gandhi. Gandhi continued to work with other Indians, and at a meeting in Johannesburg in August 1908, they decided to burn their government papers. Gandhi was again sent to prison. This time, with the other Indian prisoners, he had to break stones, cook, and sew the prison hats which were worn by the prisoners. While he was in prison, Castor became seriously ill. I love you so much, wrote Gandhi, that even if you die, you will still be alive to me. She was still ill when he came out of prison, and he cared for her at Phoenix Farm. But he was soon in prison again. About 4,000 Indians were sent to prison in 1908 and 1909. Prisoners went to live on the Phoenix Farm, where Maganlal Gandhi, the son of Gandhi's cousin, had become a leader of the farm. Harilal, Gandhi's oldest son, had married in 1906 and come to South Africa with his wife. Harilal joined Gandhi's work and was sent to prison several times. In 1909, Gandhi went to London again, but the British government was unwilling to disagree with Smuts. On the ship back to South Africa, Gandhi wrote a book in which he described the changes he wanted in India. He wanted Indians to govern India and to refuse to live a Western life. He wanted rich Indians to live a simple life. He believed that Hindus, Muslims, and other faiths belonged to one Indian nation and that nonviolence was central to Indian life. Indians should not copy the violence of the British. Gandhi sent a copy of the book to the great Russian writer, Leo Tolstoy, who wrote the famous book, War and Peace. Tolstoy believed that people should refuse to obey a bad government. He hated war and violence and believed that a simple, holy life was the best for everyone. In 1894, Gandhi had read one of Tolstoy's books, which helped him develop his ideas. Tolstoy read Gandhi's book and wrote several letters to Gandhi just before he died in 1910. When Gandhi arrived back in South Africa, he realized that it was too difficult to look after so many families at Phoenix Farm, which was too far from his office in Johannesburg. It was time to move again.